Hey, so welcome to the latest uh, developer video for Democracy 4. I'm Cliff. I am a programmer and designer on the game. And uh, we're doing these videos every two weeks, so I'm going to talk about what we've done in the last two weeks. Uh, there's loads of old videos if, if like, you're completely new to kind of like what we're doing. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to show you something in options and explain what the hell it is. Because uh, we've started running the game on like other PCs and stuff like that. Uh, so I ran it on my laptop and it's quite a technical thing really but I have like Windows 10 on my laptop uh, I've got Windows 10 everywhere actually but um, this laptop has a 1920 by 1080 uh, screen but it's actually quite small so it's a high high dots per inch like what do we use dots per inch not like pixels per centimeter anyway so what that means is like Windows recommends that you adjust this scaler and it automatically sets it to 150% scaling. So you have the, the crispness of like a high DPI monitor, um, but you can still read stuff, right? And, and I never noticed this. Then, then I ran the game and it would run at a stupidly low resolution and, and um, it, it wouldn't actually work properly because there is a minimum resolution for the game, which I think is 1280 by 800. Anyway, why does this matter? Well, the way Windows handles this is dreadful. I mean, there's, I, I don't know, it's, it's a tough thing to do. If you have that on, if you have the custom scaling option on in Windows 10, and a game asks, what is the resolution of the desktop so we can match it? It lies. Windows lies. Okay, it says it's like uh, 1280, 800. It's not. It's not, it's 1920, 1080. So you then create a window the right size, and it's wrong. It's absolutely crazy. Now what you can do is you can call a function that says, I know all about DPI, don't, you know, mislead me, give me the real resolution. Um, so we do that, okay, we do that now and everything is great. Now the problem is you might want to, you might want it to lie. Why would you want it to lie? If you have a 4K monitor, but you don't want the game to run at 4K resolution where everything will be tiny. So if you have a 4K monitor, but it's not the size of a house and you want to run full screen, you have to let Windows lie and say, oh, it's only a 2K monitor and we'll, we'll like scale things for you. Um, anyway, why am I telling you all this? It's because we've added a new check button called Disable DPI Aware. The only people who will check this are people with 4K monitors who um, don't want to run the game in 4K? They want to. They want to have it scaled from like you know 2K or whatever. That's the only reason you do that. So you'd launch the game. You go, oh, this resolution is ridiculous. We then say, look, tick that and restart it, and it'll be fine. Um, I'm only telling you this because it's a whole day of messing around because um, it's such a mess in code. I don't want to go on about programming, but like um, there's a function called set DPI awareness. There's also a function called set DPI aware. <laughs> like they do different things. Like, yeah, yeah, two different teams worked on that. Uh, absolute disaster. Anyway, let us let us launch a game. Um, I've hacked in an immediate election uh, in this particular game, but I'm gonna talk about the other stuff that we've done. So um, one of the big things that we've done is introduced um, some, not all of the stuff from Democracy 3 Africa, like intellectual property rights is something that was never in the game, but it was in Democracy 3 Africa. That's now in the game. I'm in the UK, I've set it pretty high because we're pretty, you know, we enforce this stuff, yeah. Um, I've taken the incredibly um, personal opinion that young people don't like copyright, which is ironic. Um, what industries do you think you're going to work in? You're not going to work in a steel mill. You're going to be creating IP for a living. Um, you should you should be pro IP. Anyway, whatever. Um, I'm not going to start that argument. Um, so intellectual property rights is in. Loads of stuff has come in from uh, Democracy 3 Africa. Not everything. So press freedom is a thing. Interestingly, uh, if you've been watching the videos and you see these things that pop up that tell you about stuff that's happening in the press, where the, the, the press point out stuff that people are unhappy about in the game, that stops if press freedom gets too low. I quite like that. Um, Judicial independence, corruption is new, corruption is a thing, um, affects all sorts of stuff. We have this new th uh, measurement, well, it's from Democracy 3 Africa called stability. 
um, which is a nice way of wrapping up a number of other things. Um, and I really need to, to, to like look at that a lot and see the places I can reuse this. So stuff that used to affect business confidence, now it affects stability as a kind of general um, thing. Um, two other things that we, we've brought in that are quite interesting is executive term length and executive term limit. Now in the UK we don't have a term limit. In other words, if Boris Johnson continues to be popular, he could be prime minister forever until he dies. We don't have a limit on it. I think the US has two terms, doesn't it? Um, and we, funnily enough, in the UK, we have a convention that there's an election every sort of four or five years. That's it, it's not in law, but we do, you know? Um, we then had the Fixed Term Parliament Act, which changed that, but it turns out you can just overturn that with a majority vote. So it's kind of, it's ridiculous anyway. Um, but what you can do now in the game is you can change that. Like, it's hard. Right, I'm going to talk about the, these red bits later. So um, I'd, I'd need quite a lot of political capital to change this. But basically, if things are going really badly, I can put off the election for a year. Now that's really going to affect stability, that's going to affect democracy. People are not going to like you doing that. It will be unpopular. Um, you need a lot of political capital to do it. Um, but you can do it, like people have done this in, in countries, not in like first world countries, but they've done it. You can also change the executive term length. Now, this is a little bit like assassinations, in that when we have assassinations in the game, in Democracy 1, 2 and 3, people will complain, saying no one gets assassinated in the real world, it's ridiculous, it makes the game uh, unrealistic. Um, Firstly, I, I remember, I was there, Gandalf. Um, well, I wasn't there. Um, but, like, people shot at Ronald Reagan. They didn't kill him, but they shot at him. Um, people killed Kennedy. Um, and around the world, loads of people get killed. Um, you know, if, if you don't just look at the US and the UK and France, Germany, whatever. Uh, so that does happen. And so do people ever, like, ex extend the executive term length uh, or, or term limit? Yeah, of course they do in, in, in unstable countries. Now... Without having a dig at uh, President Trump, which because uh, I try not to get involved in personal politics talking about this, is it impossible to imagine a situation where, for example, the coronavirus or whatever um, gets bad enough in the US that they put the election back a year? Now, that would be a huge big deal, right? But it's not impossible. It's not impossible, okay? So um, we put things in the game um, like, like banning homosexuality like making abortion illegal we put things in that we don't think is ever going to happen but, but to be honest uh, like when we did democracy three um we never thought like a border wall would be a thing and and, and it's a thing so like anyway so we've got a load of new stuff in there from democracy three africa um which is quite interesting we've also got emigration is in there now so um if you have an unstable countries people are gonna they're gonna leave um that is separate to the specific thing that is a brain drain uh, or, or um, capital flight. Capital flight is businesses leaving. A brain drain is basically when the, the most qualified, higher earning, wealthier people kind of um, leave because of a tax situation. Um, this emigration is more like, oh my God, there's rioting and racism and, um, and you know, disease everywhere. I'm just getting the hell out. So that's a different thing. So that's it. Right. Let's talk about other stuff that, that that's in that, um, that people are going to love. Um, before I get to that, um, look, lovely bouncy effect. Don't you like that? Um, I changed this from, from from the last time I was talking about it. I think so. Um, this is this is a three party system, which, which I know a lot of people wanted. Uh, this is my party. This is kind of like the middle of the road party, and that's like the other extreme. So if I'm left, they're centrist and they're right, whatever. Um, and so the, the, this is a distribution of happiness with the government and the dots are every single voter and they are each individual voter you can look at and you can see their approval and they're coloured if they're in a party. I should maybe have a darker colour if they're an activist or something and, and, and I just like silly bouncy effects that do that. And over time you'll come here and you'll see the distribution of all this moving and I, I think it's an interesting way to look at it. Um, Something else that has gone in, I'm doing my list out of order, but I don't care because I'm just crazy, um, uh, is the artwork for this stuff. Um, I don't think that was in last time. My favourite bit of artwork in the whole thing um, 
just because it's a real like, all of these are real things that that happen like this if you follow british politics this oh we've got a, 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 um, a bug there to do with colon um apostrophes um th this would have been ed miliband trying to eat a bacon sandwich on camera which um a lot of people had to go at uh, this would be david cameron when he tried to get excited about a football match um i don't know if we i'm not sure who that was but someone did that this is epic this is the Ed Stone, where um, the leader of the Labour Party um, a, a few uh, a few years ago now um, decided that carving their manifesto promises in a huge piece of stone, um, which if they won they would put um, in the garden of Number Ten Downing Street, would convince people that they would stick to their promises. Um, there's a lot of really funny stuff about this. Um, the piece of stone was actually too big, too heavy, to um, display where they wanted to display it for the cameras so they had to have it on like this truck with a load of metal framework around it and, it's, and it was it was it went really badly but but that's the point of these these are media events that you think yeah this will go well and sometimes it doesn't we've got others they're all real things um i can't remember who that that might have been john kerry that was definitely john kerry um clinton used to do this a lot that's obviously putin there um, everyone does the, the charity thing, don't they? Um, this David Cameron was filmed feeding a baby goat. I mean, come on. <laughs> um, I think Obama gave a, gave a church speech, didn't he? Um, in the UK, it's just considered bad form if you don't visit the aftermath of a flood. I don't know why. We might put more of these in. It's just the artwork's expensive. Anyway, anyway, other stuff. Exciting stuff, exciting stuff. Um, policies. Right, so people have always complained, and I used to think, I, I'm not sure, but people used to complain saying, if I want to raise taxes by 1%, that shouldn't get much pushback. If I want to raise it by 40%, people should go bananas. And we used to have one fixed number, which was the raise, well, we had two, one for raise, one for lower. So I have a certain amount of political capital, which is kind of uh, power. Um, I currently have 17. Um, and here I am at income tax wanting to do my thing. So um, it used to be uh, doing this would, would cost the same amount, even though look, it has dramatically different effects and doing that would, would have, have the same amount. So now it's changed. There are three numbers um, for going up and three numbers for going down. And therefore, I think it's 10%, 25% and then the rest. I think some like that, I don't know, like each way. So if I want to raise that first chunk there, I can I can go anywhere there for like nine political capital. If I start going this high, I need 18. If I go beyond that, I'll need 36. And below, that'll be two, that'll be four, that'll be eight. And I think that's, I might put in as you move this, a little pop up above it that tells you how much political capital that'll cost. So I haven't, I haven't like finished finessing it um, but I think that makes sense I think um, I worry a lot that I, I don't want to make the game too complicated for new players um, but I, I I think I can explain that um, you know like with little pop-ups and that'll be a tutorial thing anyway um, but I think this is very interesting people have talked about it for ages and I could never get an implementation of it that I was happy with in terms of user interface but I'm quite happy with this and it's interesting in two respects. Firstly, because it's more realistic. Well, three respects. Firstly, it's more realistic. Um, secondly, it allows you to do more because you can find if you've got five or six political capital left at the end of a turn, there's a lot of policies that you can tweak just a bit. So it's it kind of uh, creates more kind of player engagement. Uh, the third thing is it makes every decision regarding a policy slider slightly more more um, interesting because if I was thinking of doing that now I kind of think well that's gonna use another nine political capital maybe I should just go down to there and then I could use that other political capital on something else because look there's not much difference between, between that what's 10 billion in revenue <laughs> um, so I think it makes it more interesting 
Interestingly, I've put loads of real numbers in the game, although they all need adjusting because currently they're set up for years and they should be for quarters. Um, anyway, it's a long, it's, it's, it's a long story. Um, but basically, if you look here in the UK um, at the moment, this roughly matches um, reality, relatively speaking. So yeah, uh, payroll tax in the UK um, it is you know about the same as sales tax corporation tax brings in about as much as we spend on debt interest um, although the, these numbers are different because of the, the, the anyway it doesn't matter um, so, so the numbers are a lot more realistic now anyway so um, that's all cool stuff isn't it let's have an election why not he says um, because I've hacked in an election because I needed to record a video clip so here's an election um, I don't know if I've shown the screen much to people. Anyway, so this is the election results screen. Um, this is me. This is the, the, the centrist party. This is the, the party that disagrees with me. Um, and these are people not voting. So we have like a new animation y things. Um, and I'm doing okay, but I'm not doing that okay. I've kind of hacked this result. To be honest. So this is this result here, which I'm going to click away from because it'll get really loud, um, uh, is, is the coalition. So, so this has gone grey to indicate that they're not part of the coalition. So I'm going into a coalition with the Social Democrats. All us Democrats together. Um, anyway, this is what it looks like and this is how it works. I thought I'd let you know um, what that looks like. So um, we're doing really well on the game. It is at the point now where it, it, we have some bugs. We have some uh, pretty rare crash bugs and we have some graphical corruption bugs. A few little things that don't look right. We're going to fix those, um, and I need to put in some, some kind of um, error reporting and feedback stuff. Um, but we're not that far off where we will be selling it from our website very kind of like quietly um, to the, like the sort of people that watch these videos, um, and you'll get a really early copy that will obviously be updated every time. Um, so we can get some genuine feedback. And at that point, there's just going to be a lot of playing the game and um, like like tweaking all the, all of the numbers and also there's going to be like the adding of the other countries so that when we go into early access um on steam and, and more people hear about the game um at that point i think i would like to have some translations already done and i think um um, we'll have quite a few countries in there. At the moment, it just launches the UK. There's not even a screen to select. Um, but we are getting there. I know loads of people keep asking, saying, when's it going to be released? When's it done? Um, um, you know, we are getting there. You can tell, I think. I hope you can tell. Um, if I go to next term, I don't know if you've seen this. I've had an, had an election, so I can have like a free reshuffle. So I could get rid of these three people if they've always bugged me. Um, actually, my cabinet is really loyal. So I guess I can, I can just decide not to do that. Um, anyway, that's enough for one week. Well, that's two weeks work. This is Democracy 4, thank you for watching. Um, it will be coming out uh, soonish, I don't know. Uh, you know, like and subscribe or follow me on Twitter, although I don't use it much now. Um, or check out our forums, um, we're easy to find. And thank you for watching.